6 easy pieces. Let's roll the intro. The interference of electron waves. Now let us try to analyze the curve of figure to see whether we can understand the behavior of the electrons. The first thing we would say is that since they come in lumps, each lump which we may as we call an electron has come either through hole 1 or through hole 2. Let us write this in the form of proposition. Proposition A Each electron either goes through hole 1 or it goes through hole 2. Assuming proposition A All electrons that arrive at the backstop can be divided into two classes 1. Those that come through hole 1 and 2. Those that come from hole 2. So, our observed curve must be the sum of the effects of the electron which come through hole 1 and the electrons which come through hole 2. Let us check this idea by experiment. First, we will make a measurement for those electrons that come through hole 1. We block off hole 2 and make our count of the click from the detector. From the clicking rate, we get P1. The result of the measurement is shown by the curve marked P1 in part B. The result seems quite reasonable. In a similar way, we measure P2, the probability distribution of the electron that come through hole 2. The result of this measurement is also drawn in the figure. The result P12 obtained with both holes open and clearly not the sum of P1 and P2. The probabilities for each hole alone in analog with our water wave experiment, we say there is interference. How can such an interference come about? Perhaps we should say, well, that means presumably that it is not true that the lumps go either through hole 1 or hole 2, because if they did, the probabilities should add. Perhaps they go in a more complicated way, they split in half and but no, they cannot, they always arrive in lumps. Well, perhaps some of them goes through one and then they go around through two and then around a few more times or by some other complicated path, they by closing hole two, we change the chance that an electron that started out through hole one would finally get to the backstop. But notice there are some points at which few electrons arrive when both holes are open but which receive many electrons if we close one hole. So closing one hole increase the number from the other. Notice however that at the center of the pattern P12 is more than twice as large as P1 plus P2. It is and though closing one hole decrease the number of electrons which come through the other hole. It seems hard to explain both effects by proposing that the electron travel in complicated path. It is all quite mysterious, and the more you look at it, the more mysterious it seems. Many ideas have been concocted to try to explain the curve of P12 in terms of individual electrons going around in complicated way through the hole. None of them has succeeded. None of them can get the right curve from P12 in terms of P1 and P2. Yet, surprisingly enough, the mathematics for relating P1 and P2 to P12 is extremely simple. For P12, it is just like the curve I12 and that was simple. What is going on that backstop can be described by two complex numbers that we can call phi1 
and phi 2 the absolute square of phi 1 gives the effect with only hole 1 open that is p1 is equals to phi 1 square the effect with the only hole 2 open is given by phi 2 in the same way that is p12 is equals to pi phi 1 square and the combined effect of two holes is just p12 is equals to phi 1 plus phi 2 the mathematics is the same as what we had from the water waves we conclude the following the electrons arrive in lumps like practicals and probabilities of arriving of these lumps is distributed like the distribution of intensity of a wave it is in this sense that an electron behaves sometimes like a practical and sometimes like a wave it is in this sense that an electron behaves sometimes like a particle and sometimes like a wave incidentally when we were dealing with classical waves we define that intensity as the mean over time of the square of the wave amplitude and we use complex numbers as a mathematical trick to simplify the analysis. But in quantum mechanics, it turned out that an amplitude must be represented by a complex number. The real part alone will not do. That is the technical point for the moment because the formula looks just the same. Since the probability of arrival through both holes is given so simple, although it is not equal to P1 plus P2, that is really all there is to say. But there are a large number of subtitles involved in the phase that nature does work this way. We would like to illustrate some of the subtitles for you now. First, since the number that arrives at a particular point is not equal to the number that arrives through 1 plus the number that arrives through 2, and we would have concluded that proposition A. Undoubtedly, we should conclude that proposition A is false. It is not true that the electron go either through hole 1 or hole 2, but that con conclusion can be reset by another experiment. Watching the electrons. We shall now try the following experiment. To our electron apparatus, we add a very strong light source placed behind the wall and between the two holes. We know that electric charges scatter light, so when an electron passes, however it does pass on its way to the detector, it will scatter some light to our eye, and we can see where the electron goes. It, for instance, an electron where to take the path via hole 2 that is sketched. We should see a flash of light coming through the vicinity of the place marked A in the figure if an electron passes through hole 1. We would expect to see a flash from the vicinity of the upper hole. If it should happen that we get light from both places at the same time because the electron divides in half. Let us just do the experiment. Here is what we see. Every time that we hear a click from our electron detector, we also see a flash of light either near hole 1 or no near hole 2, but never both at once. And we observe the same result no matter where we put the detector. From this observation, we conclude that when we look at the electron, we find that the electron goes either through one hole or the another. Experimentally, proportion A is necessarily true. What then is wrong with our arguments against proposition A? Why isn't P12 just equal to P1 plus P2? Back to experiment. Let us keep track of the electrons and find out what they are doing. For each position of the detector, we will count the electrons that arrive and also keep track on which hole they went through. By watching for the flashes, we can keep track of things this way. Whenever we hear a click, we will put a count in column 1. If we see the flash near hole 1 and if we see the flash near hole 2, we will read a count in column 2. Every electron which arrives is recorded in one or two classes, those which come through one and those which come to through two. From the number recorded in column one, we get the probability P1 that an electron will arrive at the detector via hole one. And from the number recorded in column two, we get P2. 
the probability that an electron will arrive at the detector via hole 2 if we now repeat such an experiment for many values of x we get the curve of p1 and p2 shown in part p well that is not too surprising we get for p1 something quite similar to what we got before p2 by blocking off hole 2 and p2 is similar to what we got by blocking hole 1 so there is not any complicated business like going through both holes when we watch them the electrons come through just as we would expect them to come through whether the holes are closed or open those which we see come through hole 1 are disturbed in the way whether hole 2 is open or closed we must conclude that when we look at the electron the distribution of them on the screen is different than we do not look perhaps it is turning out a light source that distributes things it must be that electrons are very delicate and the light when it scatter off the electrons give them a jot that changes their motion we know that the electric field of the light acting on a charge will exert a force on it so perhaps we should expect the motion to be changed anyway the light experts a big influence of the electrons by turning towards the electrons we have change for the motion that is the jot given to the electron when the photon is scattered by this such to change the electron's motion enough so that if it might have gone to where p12 was at a maximum it will instead land where p12 was minimum that is why we no longer see the way interference effects you may be thinking don't use such a bright source turn the brightness down the light waves will be weaker and will not disturb the electron so much surely by making the light dimmer and dimmer eventually the wave will be weak enough that it will have a negligible effect okay let's try it the first thing we observe is that flash of light scatters from the electrons as they pass by does not get weaker it always the same size flash the only thing that happens as the light is made up of dimmer that is that sometimes we hear a click from the detector but see no flash at all the electron has gone by without being seen what we are observing is that light also acts like electrons we knew that it was wavy but now we find that it is also lumpy this is all a little discouraging if this is true that whenever we see the electron we see the same size flash then those electrons we see as flashing always the disturbed ones let us try the experiment with a dim light away now whenever we hear a click in the detector we will keep them account in three column column one those electrons seen by hole one and column two those electrons seen by hole two and in column three those electrons not seen at all that is ununderstandable when we do not see the electrons no photons disturb it but and when we do see the photons are disturbed it there is always the same amount of disturbance because the light photons are produced the same size effects and the effects of the photons being scattered is enough to smell out an indifference effect let us try the experiment with longer wave we shall keep repeating our experiment each time and with light of a longer wavelength at first nothing seems to change the result are the same then a terrible thing happened you remember that when we discussed the microscope we pointed out that due to the wave nature of the light there is a limitation on how close two spots can be and still we see as two separate spots the distance is how order of the wavelength of light so now when we make the wavelength longer than the distance between our holes we see a big fleshy flash when the light is scattered by the electron we can no longer tell which hole the electron went through we just know it with somewhere and it is just the with the light that of the color that we find the joys given to the electrons are same enough to that p12 begin to look like p12 in an experiment we find that it is impossible to arrange the light in such a way that one can tell which hole the electron went through and at the same time not disturb the pattern it was suggested by hansen bog that the 10 new law of nature could only be constant if there are some basic limitations of our experiment 
capability is not previously recognized he proposed as a journal principle this uncertainty principle which we can state in terms of our experiment as follows it is impossible to design an apparatus to determine which hole the electron pass through that will not at the same time disturb the electron enough to destroy the interference pattern well you say what about proposition a it is true or it is not true that the electron either goes through hole one or it goes through hole two the only answer that can be given is that we found that experiment that there is a certain special way that we have to think in order that we do not get into inconsistency what we must say where there is nothing in experiment to disturb the electron there one way not such that electron goes either through hole one or hole two if one does say that a star is to make any deductions from the statement he will make errors in the analysis that it is the logical tight rope on which we must walk if we wish to describe nature successfully first principle of quantum mechanics we will now write a summary on the main conclusion of our experiments we will however put the result in the form which makes them true for a journal class of such experiments we can write our summary more simply if we first define an ideal experiment as one in which there are no uncertain external influence that is no jiggling or other things going on that we cannot take any into account we would be quite precise if we said an internal experiment is one in which all of the in- initial and final conditions of the experiment are completely s- specified what we will call an event is in general just and a specific set of internal and final conditions the uncertainty principle this is the way hanser box stated the uncertainty principle originally if you make the measurement on any object and you can determine the x component of its momentum with an uncertainty you cannot at the same time know its x position more accurately the uncertainty is the position and momentum of an instrument must have the product greater than half they reduce plan constant this is a special case of uncertainty principle that was stated above more generally the more general statement was that one cannot design equipment in any way to determine which of the following alternatives is taken without at the same time destroying the pattern of interference let us show for one particular case that the kind of relation given by hansen buck must be true in order to keep from getting into trouble we imagine a modification of the experiment as shown in figure watching the motion of the plate carefully we can try to tell which hole an electron goes through imagine what happens when the detector is placed at x is equals to 0 we would expect that an electron which passes through hole one must be deflected downward by the plate to reach the detector since the vertical component of the electron momentum is changed the plate must recoil with an equal momentum in opposite direction the plate will get an upward kick if the electron goes through the lower hole and the plate should feel a downward kick it is clear that for a very position of the detector the momentum received by the plate will have a different value of a transversal via hole one that from a transversal via hole two so without disturbing the electron at all just by watching the plate we can tell which plate the electron used now in order to do this it is necessary to know what the momentum of the screen is the wiggling of the interference pattern will be summed out we shall show quantitatively in the next chapter that we have determined the momentum of the plate sufficiently accurately to determine from the recoil measurement which hole was used then the uncertainty in the x position of the plate will according to the uncertainty principle be enough to shift the pattern observed at the detector up and down in the x direction about the distance from a maximum to the nearest minimum such a random shift is just enough to smear out the pattern so that no interference is observed the uncertainty principle protects quantum mechanics hence buck recognized that if it were possible to measure the momentum and the position simultaneously with great accuracy the quantum mechanics would collapse 
so it proposed that it must be impossible then people sat down and tried to figure out ways of doing it and nobody could figure out a way to measure the position and the momentum of anything a screen and electron a bill billiard ball anything with any greater accuracy quantum mechanics maintains its previous but accurate existence like share and subscribe to our youtube channel and stay tuned for the further videos